More breaking news tonight, this time out of Alaska. We've got some projected results in a special election for a U.S. House seat. The state's former governor, Sarah Palin, was in the runoff. But NBC News can project that Democrat Mary Peltola will win the seat. NBC senior national politics reporter Jonathan Allen joins us now with more. And John, this was a ranked choice voting election, which Sarah Palin, the former governor, is blaming in part for her defeat. We'll get to that in just a second. But what does it mean that Democrat Mary Peltola will take this seat now? Well, there are a whole lot of things that, that means. I mean, number one, uh, she's the first Democrat to hold that seat in uh, in many years, basically uh, about half a century since um, since Nick Begich the first, the uh, senior, held that seat. He died in a, a plane crash, uh, or was presumed to have died in a plane crash. Um, it also means that the Democrats have won uh, another special election in a year in a Republican area this time, Alaska, heavily Republican state. Uh, Donald Trump came in and campaigned for uh, Sarah Palin. And, of course, from a representational standpoint, uh, you have the first Native Alaskan uh, to, to win that House seat and to, to come to the United States House. So um, a, a lot going on tonight. What about uh, Sarah Palin's uh, defeat in this? She released a statement in which she, as I said, did blame ranked choice voting in part for this. She's not disputing the results, but she's kind of disputing the results by disputing the system that yielded the results. She said that she is not going to retreat. Instead, in her words, I'm going to reload. And says in her statement, in part, let's work even harder to send an America first conservative to Washington in November. That's a quote from Sarah Palin's statement. What is the expectation in terms of this seat and how this fits into the Democrats' hopes for the midterms? I mean, was this a long shot for Mary Peltola to pick it up? Um, it was a long shot, although the ranked choice voting system that they're using really, um, you know, puts an emphasis in a, in a way that the elections we normally watch uh, don't on um, on voters being able to stop somebody from getting to Congress. And in the case of Sarah Palin, I think that's what Alaska voters uh, basically said in this case. Uh, these candidates are going to be on the ballot again in November. Um, we're going to go through this process again. Uh, we'll see if they have the same view after a few months of uh, seeing uh, Paul Tola in the, in the House of Representatives. Um, but uh, it will be interesting to watch. You know, I, one of the benefits of this system to those who, who like it is that you, you have the ability as a voter really to, as I said before, kind of cancel somebody you don't think should be in office. Explain that little piece you just said in terms of going through this again in November. This piece of the election was just to finish the late Don Young's term. This isn't for the full two-year term. That's in November, right? That's exactly right, Joshua. And, uh, you know, Don Young had been in Congress uh, since before I was born, uh, died recently, opening up his seat and this special election to fill it for the rest of this year. Uh, but for the next term of Congress, which starts in January, uh, you'll have a typical uh, November election. And again, uh, we're going to see these candidates again, Paltola, uh, Sarah Palin, and uh, Nick Baggage, who was a Republican, but from a family that sent a uh, Democrat, his father, to the House of Representatives, and uh, his brother, a senator, uh, Mark Baggage, for, for some years from Alaska, uh, who was also a Democrat. Do we have a sense, John, of what the big issues are going to be or what the big issues were this time around? I mean, you know, abortion has become an extremely hot primary election or midterm election issue, understandably so. Mary Peltola has said that she supports a woman's right to choose and supports the protections that had been enshrined in Roe v. Wade. Is that what we think kind of drove the election or were there more kind of local Alaskan kitchen table issues at work? Sort of all of the above there, Joshua, I do think abortion was important. I think a lot of times in states like Alaska, where you have, um, you know, a big, uh, big population, uh, sorry, a small population spread over a big, big area, it's in the West, you have a sort of um, a rugged independence um, and a, uh, an antipathy toward the government telling people what they should do. And um, for some voters, that includes uh, a state government saying uh, whether or not a woman should have a right to choose. Um, or the federal government saying that the, a woman should not have the right to choose. So I think that was part of it. You also have uh, climate change as an issue. Um, Alaska, obviously, you know, you just had uh, a report on the heat in Death Valley at 125 degrees. Alaska's not there yet, um, but Alaska is a beautiful, pristine state, and uh, you know, has these important um, uh, these important ice blocks that uh, you know uh, that I think a lot of people in the state would like to preserve. 
Um, so I think there were some local issues as well as that uh, more national issue of abortion that we talked about. And of course, the big thing here is that Poltola said she was going to work with people, um, that she wanted to work in a bipartisan fashion, that she had a history of doing that in the state legislature. And of course, Palin is most known um, you know, for, for being uh, on the extreme edge of the Republican Party. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.